Well, um, I thought it was a kind of a typical Big East battle. You know, that's the the game that I remember playing in a long, long time ago. And as I've watched from my recent perspective, uh, certainly that's how the game felt to me. Tough-minded, both teams making big plays. Uh, Seton Hall deserves a lot of credit. They're tough-minded, hard-playing group. Really, really respect uh, their effort level and the way they go about things. And you know, I'm Kadari Richmond, regardless of his stats, and I know he had 17 points. He's just a very, very unique player. You know, six-six point guard and big and strong. He can pass and score. And uh, you know, he had 28 against Providence, and he followed that up tonight with 17 points and five assists. Um, but thrilled to win. Uh, credit our crowd. You know, here we are right before uh, Christmas break for them to show up like they did. You know, we needed their energy, and I thought at the end of the game in the second half, our team really fed off the Centos crowd. So, you know, happy holidays to our crowd. Thank you for showing up, and uh, we really needed uh, needed it tonight. Every, every win is big, especially in the league. Um, but the fact that this team had been so, so tough on, on you guys over the past few years, and, and even in this building, um, does does getting this win tonight mean a little bit more to your to your group? You know, I think so. Uh, we talked about you know the previous years. I, I think though there were a couple seasons when we went to Seton Hall and won on their home court, but then they came here and returned the favor. But uh, you know they they're a tough group now. Uh, I mean, hustle, athleticism, defense. Um, they're wired in, in a real specific way and. You have to be able to meet that. I, I thought in the second half, regardless of the score, that we did a better job in that area than we did in the first half. And then right when we had them at eight points under the four-minute media timeout, we kind of reverted back to just kind of trading baskets as if we were going to you know, get to the finish line and it'd be easy, and it, it doesn't work that way. Uh, you know, we had a couple of players leak out on rebounds. We gave up a free throw miss, scored a couple around the basket where nobody was around, you know, and, you know, being able to finish. But we then almost recalibrated and in the last minute made some really winning plays. Um, Kobe Jones had the flu, threw up at halftime, didn't practice yesterday. We weren't sure he was going to even play in the game. And... You know, the poor guy, we've played 13 games. I'm going to tell you six of the 13 games, he's either played on a bad ankle, which I would say 80% of the players that I've coached would not have played when he did. And then tonight, 90% of the guys that I know would not have played. Uh, he vomited at halftime, I and mean, he came back out. So just to watch him fight through it was inspiring and – you know, defensively, he made the biggest play of the game. Up one, Kadari Richmond driving. Kobe beat him to the spot, didn't foul, created a turnover. And, you know, I think that's the epitome of a two-way player, a guy that does it on defense and on offense. And, uh, you know, Kobe, I know the Big East coaches feel this way because they picked him on the first team, all Big East, but there aren't too many better two-way players in our conference than, than Kobe Jones. And uh, his leadership, his leading by example, is just uh, – he's a winner. And it was great to see him have some success tonight playing through what he did. Sean, coming off Georgetown where you guys won by scoring 100 points, had a very fast-paced offensive game. You turn around and have a game like this, like you mentioned, a typical Big East battle where it kind of is down to under the defense side of the ball to kind of get some stock and stuff like that and your team wins, are you starting to feel more comfortable that your team can really win in any style game at this point? Definitely not. <laughs> no, no, we, we're, we're, we're working towards becoming that for sure. And, and, you know, Jack Nungy didn't have a good night tonight. I think it's obvious, can't play great every night. Totally expect him to take a few days, take a deep breath, and come back and be himself. But for us to be able to win the game tonight with him playing – in that role, 0 for 5 from the field. If you think about how good he's been the first 13 games, that's what I like about tonight. You know, and even Adam Kunkel, 
He made the big three at the end, but he was one for eight from the floor going into that shot. And, you know, so you add that up, one for eight, Jack 0 for five, Kobe with the flu, tough-minded Seton Hall game, a team. You know, it's, it's, I think, very, very fulfilling for our group to be able to leave with a victory. And uh, they're not always going to be easy, and some of them are going to be prettier than others, but be able to win the game is the name of – that's the objective, and tonight we did it. Sean, with Adam having – or excuse me, uh, with, with Jack having the night that he had, how big was Jerome uh, picking up the slack there? He was great, and that's a great question. You know, Jerome, in some ways – was almost a player of the game for us because we really needed him. And uh, he came in the game, played the three position, played the four position, did a good job on defense, and then scored 11 points. So he was big. And then, look, I have to credit Zach Fremantle because throughout the game, by far, he was our best player. I mean, 23 points and nine rebounds. When sometimes we didn't have our offense going, Zach delivered. and. Uh, it's great to see him pick up the slack when Jack maybe didn't have his night, his typical night. With uh, Colby, could you describe the process of you know, cleaning him up and getting him ready physically to play in this game uh, to the extent that you're comfortable and the role of the training staff and everyone played in that? You know, as always, we listened to the athlete and the training staff, and uh, he was able to see the doctor and, and get some fluid in him and – you know, he, he is, his temperature never really spiked. But, look, when you feel bad, you feel bad. And, you know, I watched him at halftime. I don't know. I thought he was going to do it again on the court at one point. But, you know, he plays. You know, I didn't take it easy on him. He played 36 minutes as well, you know. So 16 points, six assists, one turnover, eight rebounds. I mean, he's a heck of a player, but an amazing kid, great competitor, winner and uh, I think we really feed off of him and um, you know you you have a history in the Big East and I wonder if uh, if this is a little nostalgic to find yourself on the coaching side of a, a tight Big East game like this yeah I mean uh, like I like I mentioned it I, I there's really no surprises for me in the Big East like I, I just have such immense respect for the conference and uh, coaches. I know every game is going to be a battle. And, you know, I, I think that if you're a player or, or if you're a part of college basketball, you want to be in a conference like, like the one we're in, where every night it's a fight. And, uh, you know, you have to be ready. It has to bring out the best in you. But you also got to remember, because of our non-conference schedule, the 13 games that we've played here before the holiday break, you know, they're – there's no gimmies. Uh, we, we, I feel like we lined up 13 times and, uh, and fought the good fight. So I think it's a break that our players will uh, enjoy. And, uh, you know, when we come back, we go to New York to play St. John's. And I think everybody knows how, how tough that will be. So happy holidays.